The Logitech G Pro is an ambidextrous shaped mouse primarily geared toward right-handed users and that's all thanks to its mouse 4 and mouse 5 buttons being present on the left side only. I'm a little sad in that respect not to see a left-handed version of the mouse but perhaps that's something that will come in future and better this than accidentally clicking the buttons if they're on both sides with your pinky fingers. The G Pro has six programmable buttons, which include the DPI switch on top of the mouse. It also houses the acclaimed PMW3366 sensor, which was the first version of the sensor die and is exclusive to Logitech since the original G502. This sensor has become somewhat of a cornerstone amongst competitive players and competing products from other vendors. This sensor went on to form the basis for the rest of the family, i.e. the PMW3360 that we find in countless other products today, including the more recently reviewed MM530. It features a DPI of up to 12,000 and absolutely no smoothing at any step, the latter being a unique and exclusive feature that continues to separate it from the competition. The mouse itself has a height of approximately 38mm, a length of 117 and a width of 62 It's quite slim in that respect and coming in at around 83 grams without the cable, it's also extremely light and perfect for even the most demanding of sessions in pretty much any game you'll, you'll throw at it. It also doesn't skimp on build quality with its on-run buttons rated for 20 million clicks, plastic housing and PTFE feet. It feels sturdy with no semblance of creaking or cracking when squeezing the side. But if you're interested, here is a listen to the clicks. And finally, it also features RGB lighting that can be synchronized to other Logitech products through the software, if you're into that. My only criticism with the mouse around its shape, I'm more of an ergonomically shaped mouse user. I use a Death Adder, also quite enjoyed the MM530, and would definitely lead more toward a lighter version of the G502, or alternatively, the G402 and G403. We'll talk more about my preferences in the gameplay section, but for now, let's look at the mouse in Logitech's gaming software and some quick tests to ensure, or rather demonstrate, the baseline performance that we've come to expect from Logitech, which in other words is awesomeness. So taking a look at the G Pro in LGS, I recommend you download this from Logitech.com just so you get any firmware updates in the setting cog and pro mouse, you don't run into any issues. But you can run the mouse through its onboard memory, which is great for somebody like me that travels about to events and plays on a bunch of different computers. Essentially, I don't have to worry about installing LGS. My settings will come with me and work from the get-go, which is perfect. But if you're somebody that games more at home or exclusively at home, you can use automatic game detection. And within this, assign your different game executable files to your different profiles. So let's say you played Fortnite and your buttons were one thing, and then you swapped to World of Warcraft and you wanted something completely different, you'd be able to do that and have it swap automatically. And does include pretty much everything at the bottom here, including all your DPI settings. But as I say, I use the onboard memory. And within this, we can set up five DPI steps from 200 to 12,000, so an extremely wide range there, and most importantly, below 400, because there are some games out there that don't allow you to set a low enough sensitivity, so it's great we can do it on the mouse. Increments of 50, and there's no smoothing at any level, so it's going to be immediately responsive that the PMW3366 is known for. You can choose the amount of levels. It's practically impossible to accidentally press the DPI button, but if you only use one, you could do that, but I still find that it's useful even to have a shift button when it's playing something like Battlefield because if you jump on a turret, being able to quickly change your DPI to 5000 is actually incredibly useful on public servers. But you've also got polling rate, 1000 for one millisecond. And in terms of your shift functionality, under assign new command, you'd go to mouse function and DPI shift. And if you had a keyboard, I think you could do that on the keyboard too. But a nice hidden feature here is called G shift. If we assign G shift to one of our buttons, keyboard or mouse, it would allow us to have a secondary function for pretty much every other button on the mouse when held down. So that's kind of neat. Our next tab is our colors. We've got off, color cycle, and breathing, including the ability at the bottom here to sync it to keyboard, headset, and mouse pad. So let's say a G810, a G933, and whatever RGB mouse pad they've got. I don't think they've got any, unless the power play pad is. I think the G on the power play pad might be. And if we set off, we can also choose a specific color. So my color would be 255055, and then it would be pinky red. 
which might look a bit off on the webcam on the left of the screen. But hey, uh, you can also turn it all off if you wanted to as well. It's a shame here that we can't distinguish between the G logo and the light bar that goes around the mouse, but minor niggle and I'm not too bothered, but we'll leave it on color circle because it kind of looks neat. Our next one is our service tuning. I tend to leave it on factory default. We'll get into this in a little bit, but it essentially allows us to change liftoff distance from the default to slightly lower. And if you have issues with the service, it might be worth tweaking this just before you consider returning the product for maybe being faulty or maybe being incompatible with your surface if that's a thing. But I tend to use factory default for pretty much everything, just purely for OCD reasons more than anything. And finally, we've got our sort of heat map here. So if we hit play, press a bunch of different buttons a few times, and then hit start, we get a key presses per minute, and then a little heat map, including a bunch of different colors. And if you had a keyboard, you could see that for the keyboard too, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, next tab along under settings cog, I don't use overwolf. That might be something with the in-game overlay you'd want to do, but personally, I don't really care about it. You've got startup here. This is obviously a great feature. Not everybody likes running mouse software in the background. So being able to quickly just uncheck it and have it never run on startup is useful. Again, once you set up the onboard profile, you technically never need it again. Uh, you've also got game integration. So if I check this and hit OK, we'll get our little game integration pop up. And if I hit settings, we can have things like Counter-Strike. And if we had a keyboard and enabled this, for example, the numbers one to zero would display a health bar. And if we planted the bomb, the keyboard would flash red until it exploded. And you, there's a bunch of different cool things you could do. But again, it's something I don't particularly care about. So I leave it disabled. Uh, again, the only real thing we want to check out here is enable angle snapping. It's a bit of a shame we don't have power of and also the ability to enable acceleration on the mouse. But just not having it in itself is probably more important than anything else. But it might be something you want to experiment with if you play, for example, Call of Duty or Counter-Strike. Something where there's less vertical movement than there is horizontal. And you want to keep your crosshair locked on that horizontal head level. That could be something to mess around with. But overall, extremely impressed here. There's nothing really that I add beyond those two things. It's just Logitech through and through. They know exactly what players want. And they're kind of setting the benchmark, the cornerstone for gaming mice in many ways. But let's have a look at some tests, shall we, with a sensor and mouse. So for our first test, we jump back into Quake Live to look at the implementation of the 3366. And if there's any acceleration, aligning the G Pro with the left of the mouse pad, we move it from the left to the right until it stops tracking. In theory, no matter how slow or fast we move it, we should end up in the same place with some small amount of human error. And I'm happy to report the G Pro, as expected, has a perfect implementation, meaning the user can add their preferred amount afterwards if they want. So moving into Counter-Strike, we're going to look at the liftoff distance of the G-Pro sensor on our black cloth QCK utilizing the DVD trick. And a DVD is about 1.2 millimeters in height. And with one DVD, the G-Pro tracks, but with two, it doesn't. Telling us liftoff distance is somewhere between 1.2 and 2.4 millimeters. But jumping into Logitech gaming software under surface tuning, we can actually add a custom mouse pad. So if you run into any tracking issues before maybe returning for a faulty product, potentially, you can jump into this, add your QCK or whatever, and then tune your sensor moving your mouse in a figure of eight until it gets ready and we'll analyze it. And that, would you believe it, actually brings down liftoff distance at a below 1.2 millimeter range. Now, for me, that's too low. And I personally always like to use my mouse pretty much as they are out of the box anyway, just for OCD reasons. But it is something neat to try. And for those that like lower distance of something like maybe the new Steel Series Rival 600 or the Zowie mice, then you're gonna be able to get that feeling here with the G Pro. So really no complaints. So very quickly moving into Shoot Mania, we're gonna be looking at the mouse button debounce time. In terms of responsiveness, it's as low as ever here on the G Pro, but button debounce time can influence your ability to do full height rocket jumps, as well as mini jumps in Shoot Mania, where there's a feature called variable jump. When holding mouse two to jump, you do a full height, and when tapping it, you do a mini jump. And tapping it quickly in succession, you could do lots and lots and lots and lots of mini jumps. And with a higher button debounce time, this would not be possible. A mini jump might be a mid height jump instead. And if you're playing a game like Quake Live with mouse one to fire and mouse two to jump, a higher debounce time might not register the second click quick enough, not allowing you to do a full height jump. But no issues whatsoever, I'm happy to report in Quake Live and just a perfect button implementation. 
So moving into gaming and final thoughts. Well, the Logitech G Pro is quite honestly just another one of Logitech's flawless products geared toward high level competitive players. And there's no way to avoid not sucking up because providing of course you like the shape and by that I mean the ergonomics, then there's no doubt in my mind that this is absolutely one of the best mice for tournament play that money can buy. Its button latency is incredibly low and Logitech are usually the company that we refer to when comparing mouse to mouse in that department, in many departments in fact. The PMW 3366 represents it's just another flawless implementation. It's snappy and responsive and the only element that I personally struggled with with the G Pro was the shape of the mouse. Hitting people as they peeked out of corners was a non-issue and tracking enemy model directional changes after an hour or two on my ViewSonic XG2703 which also happens to have incredibly low signal delay was an absolute joy to do when combined with the G Pro. And I'd have absolutely no problem in recommending the G Pro to anyone looking for something new but at the end of the day if the shoe does doesn't fit, you might be better off with another product, even if it might be inferior. So the Razer Death Adder I choose to use day to day falls slightly short in button latency for example, but it's a shape that fits my style much better, as is the Logitech G403 and older G502 actually, which are essentially identical in performance outside of their shapes, the same great internals but different shells, and the G403 was a mouse that I used for several months at the start of Overwatch and thoroughly enjoyed my time with it. I suppose if I could change anything about the G Pro, it'd simply be the curve inwards toward the bottom of the mouse. I'd actually prefer something flatter that complements my grip, because that curve, combined with its slimmer size, made for a slightly awkward palm grip initially when using the mouse and squeezing it. That said, if you have slightly smaller hands, or if you're more used to ambidextrous mice, perhaps you're more of a fingertip or claw grip player, or you're willing to just put more time into getting used to the mouse, then I think you'll get on just fine with the G Pro and it's definitely worth a shot, because honestly it's almost perfect. And I especially like that I can roll my thumb to activate the side buttons in games like Quake and so on, something that many mice miss the beat on. In all though, I very much look forward to the next mouse from Logitech. Yeah okay, the G Pro might not be for me, but they do continue to be one of my favourite companies in the competitive gaming and esports space that seem to genuinely care about the needs and requirements of as niche FPS players. And you can typically rely on Logitech for a great performing product if you can get on with the shape. I'm a big fan of their keyboard. I like the idea that they're reducing both the actuation point and total travel distance on their switches and when it comes to mice I mean all of them really speak for themselves so I've been MVC here for my YouTube page if you have any questions or comments let me know don't forget that I stream every day on Twitch from 6 p.m. you can always swing by and get involved in the live discussion there and if you have any feedback on the G Pro it's been out for some time now I'd be interested to hear that too but take care and I'll catch you next time